MMA Meltdown on the Fight Network continues. Let's set it to Costa Rica, where one of the premier combat sport odds makers in the business returns to MMA Meltdown, the one and only Joey Odessa. Joey, how you doing? It's always a pleasure. Hey, my pleasure. It's a pleasure to be back. It's been a while. I had a long break. Well, you, know, you had a little bit of a hiatus, uh, but there's a ton of stuff uh, to get to uh, right now, Joey. And I know you've been busy working around the clock. And I also, also know you're very excited about Pacquiao and Mayweather. It's funny, you've been waiting, you've been waiting to, uh, to mortgage your house on this fight for, for about seven or eight years right now. Are you still ready to pull the trigger? I'm ready to pull the trigger. I don't know. I think Delahoya kind of toned me down about mortgaging houses when Pac put a beating on him. But uh, Floyd's 47-0 and, and soon to be 48-0. And, and, you know, I mean, it's worth a car. Yeah, you know what? It's worth a car. It's, uh, it's worth a Nissan at least, right? So we'll get to we'll get to the the UFC's mega fight uh, in a couple of moments' time. But a lot of fights coming up here, Joey. The UFC card on Fox in a couple of weeks. It's a really stacked one. Uh, this week they go to Poland for the first time. And for all you watching the Fight Network, you can watch the main card right here on the Fight Network. They go to Poland for the first time. And considering all the crazy combat sports leagues. And fights they've been in Poland, Joey, over the years. The UFC might actually be like, you know, the tamest combat sport that they've had there ever. Well, they have that KSW over there, and a couple of these guys came over from there. But, you know, whenever I think of Poland, I think of Andrew Gulat and Riddick Bo with the boxing and how much it cost me back in like 1996 when Gulat had just had those meltdowns when he was in the lead. So it's kind of a sore subject, but, uh, I think this card's going to be all right. It, it's, it's, I tell you what, it's competitive top to bottom. I mean, there's not huge names on it outside the main event, and which is, uh, you know, the rematch between Crow Cop and Gonzaga eight years after the, the first, almost, almost eight years to the day of the first meeting between the two of them, which, uh, you know, Gonzaga won in an upset. That's you unbelievable know, that, that it's been eight years. Like, it doesn't feel like it's been eight years. Like, if somebody asked me, if I'm playing UFC trivia and somebody asked me how long ago did that happen, I would have said six years ago, maybe five, six. You know, I'm not very good with time, <laughs> Joey, and, and years and stuff like that. But it's amazing. You know the Crow Cop hasn't won a fight in the UFC since uh, June of 2010 when he beat Pat Barry when he submitted him. And I was there at that fight in Vancouver. That was a hell of a long time ago. And he, and he almost, I mean, what were the odds of him submitting him? You know what I mean? We didn't expect that. I actually I mean, told uh, somebody, when he went in for the submission, I actually told somebody that I will retire. I will quit doing everything. He said, I said, I'll stop betting. I'll stop talking about this stuff if he wins by submission. Like 10 seconds later, he won by submission. That was the night, of course, that Pat Barry was beating him, and he started hugging him. Yeah, that 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 bout upset me. It was like kind of Pat Barry. It was his it was his idol, you know, and he just showed a little bit too much love there. And Crow Cop was bringing, you know, in fact, Crow Cop went on to lose three after that. One of them to Brendan Schwab, who you know a lot of people are out there saying that you know he should retire right now, but he's going to go down to light heavyweight. So what were the odds the first time? I, and it was basically you know Crow Cop was the legend, but that was his North American arrival, his North American to UFC fans seeing that legendary head kick that'll live in infamy forever. What were the odds in that first fight? Well, he was, I, you know, of all the fights that, that are out there, that, I, I looked and I looked and I looked, and I recall it being about a three-to-one favorite, and it could have been more because Crow Cop was coming off a win against Eddie Sanchez. It was kind of a throw-me at UFC 67. And this, this was over in, uh, this was in the U.K., so they were fighting on, you know, they weren't fighting in the United States either. But uh, what's his name? My Crow Cop was about a three to one favorite. And, you know, I, I, you know, I wasn't really sold on him. You know, I said, you know, this is, you know, you, you tossed him Eddie Sanchez. It did beat Barnett over in Pride. Those were like the, the ending years of Pride. But again, eight years ago, I mean, so many things have happened. I mean, you're talking about a guy with, four, you know, 42 some odd fights. Crow Cop and Gonzaga, I mean, up and down. Gonzaga actually was a favorite. After that fight, Gonzaga was not an underdog for, I believe it was like eight or nine fights. And he fought, fought uh, Kotor right after that. And he, he was favored over Kotor. Yeah, Gonzaga was, um, you know, he was like the next big thing in the heavyweight division, briefly. And he sort of turned into this journeyman that's fighting Crow Cop again uh, right now. Crow Cop, 6-0 and in rematches in his career. Yeah, and, and you know what else, too? It was funny because uh, 
before the Gonzaga fight, I, I believe it was, boy, my time gets mixed up, but Damian Maya had grappled him. I think it was in Abu Dhabi and beat Gonzaga, which made Maya like my next big thing until he ran into, uh, I think he ran into Silva about that time. I mean, to keep these timelines going with so many fights, I mean, it's crazy. You know, like we said, eight years ago. I mean, eight years. It's a long time. Yeah, especially in the fight game. A one year is a long time in a fight game. Like, it's, it's incredible, like you said. You know, going back, I remember when everybody was unbeatable. That's what we always say. Oh, you know, Brock Lesnar is going to be the champ forever. Leona Machida is going to be the champ forever. Uh, Johnny Hendricks. You know, once Johnny Hendricks gets in there, he's going to be the champ. He's just so good and dominant. Uh, there's such a short uh, lifespan uh, in this stuff. So what do you make of the odds uh, this time around? And, you know, I'm, I'm sort of getting tired of losing money on Gonzaga underachieving, Joey. But, like, how do you not be Crow Cop at this point in time? He's 40 years old. You look at it and you say, look, you know, this is Gonzaga. You know, Gonzaga's supposed to win this fight. But at the same time, Gonzaga... You know, he hasn't, he, Gonzaga hasn't exactly been a world beater either. Um, you know, it's, it's a good matchup for the time. It's, it's you know, it's a, it's a little too late, but, I mean, <laughs> Mitri, you know, Gonzaga's coming off a loss to Mitrione, Miosic, and, uh, you know, his wins, you know, Sean Jordan and Dave Herman, I mean, we're not going to, I'm not going to take it, discredit them, but, you know, they're, they're not world beaters. They're not going to, neither one of those are going to beat uh, Junior Dos Santos or Kane. He's real slow, Gonzaga. In, in He's real slow, Gonzaga, Joey. He's sort of like Sasquatch, man. He, he really, like, lumbers out there. Krokop, even though he's five years older, actually might be the faster man. He, you know, I want to bet Krokop. I, it pains me to say it, but <laughs> as much as this guy is, like, you know, slacked and stuff, I just, I, I think he's got to, you know, maybe we'll see the ending that we expected in the first fight. Because, I mean, who expected Gonzaga to come with the high kick, snap his ankle? I mean, that was, it looked, on, you know, on film like a career-ending type injury. I mean, you know, the way his ankle rolled and everything, I was like, wow. You know, and, and Gonzaga was the next, you know, again, Gonzaga was the next big thing. But, you know, here here we are in a revenge match. And, you know, Crow Cop, you know, he's coming off, what well, he's only won two, uh, he won two in a row where Gonzaga lost two in a row, but he beat uh, Ishii, who, you know, he's not, you know, he's no, he's no world beater. He's only got one KO, 12 and four. And, uh, you know, he did have a couple wins against, uh, you know, guys that were UFC vets. He beat, uh, he beat his own back in the day. It's sort Hizzo. of, Joey, it's sort of like uh, Andre Arlovsky, isn't it? In which it's like, man, you know, Arlovsky can't win in the UFC right now, but then he does, <laughs> you know, but then he does and you end up losing money on it. You know, this is, you know, you don't like the term fun fights, but that's all this is. This is just sort of a fight put together for the sake of it, for the rematch sake of it. Uh, you know, and that's like you said, nearly eight years. So we got to move on from this fight. But you're saying, you know, when push comes to shove, you got to pull the trigger with Crow Cop as the underdog. Yeah, and, you know, and I'll take heat for it because I've been against Crow Cop so many times in the past. I, you know, I said, oh, you know, he's just, his heart's not in it. And, you know, all the... You know, he, he almost like he wanted guys to just, you know, he just wanted to test himself as, you know, like almost in a Herschel Walker sense instead of being the guy that, you know, that you need to be. I don't know if that's a really bad analogy, but he's more like, you know, all right, bring it on, bring it on. Let's see what I, what I still have left instead of saying, okay, kid, let's see what you got. That's a good way of uh, putting it. So uh, Jimmy Monawa, somebody that was uh, destroying people, he ran into uh, Gustafson. This is his first fight uh, since Gustafson. Uh, you know, fighting in Poland, taking on uh, Blackowitz uh, here, Joy. What do you make of this one? Well, I, I watched I watched the Polish fighter get chopped down in his uh, in his loss to uh, Sokaju. Uh, you know, with leg kicks, and I would, you know he quit in the second round. He came back. He avenged the loss. That was in Poland. You know, he's uh, he's at home. You know, it's a tough, it's a tough fight. I mean, it's the right favorite. Mana was the right favorite, but you know how far. You know, I don't know. I it's tough not. It's tough to go against some of these fighters like that. Uh, you know that I've seen quit before, and and his leg was pretty busted up. Aldo, Aldo, like you know, speaking of Aldo coming up, but uh, you know, he but his leg was pretty busted up by Sokaju, and Sokaju really hasn't done anything significant since knocking out uh, Little Nog. Now, so you mentioned you mentioned Aldo, and uh, we, of course, he's fighting Conor McGregor. We had Conor McGregor on the program uh, last week, Joey. And it's similar to to Mayweather and Pacquiao, in which you know what the opening number was before the fight was announced. 
people, you know, were believing, hey, you know, Mayweather's going to be a three to one favorite, and then oh, maybe it's going to be two fifty, but then it drops, and then it keeps on dropping, and then it keeps on dropping. And every time Freddie Roach does an interview and he says, oh, you know, Pacquiao's a monster uh, in camp. He's doing this. He's doing that. He's a beast. And, and then when the countdown shows start and the, the commercials start running, people start running to the window to bet the underdog. And we've seen this exact same thing during this Conor McGregor-Aldo world tour. Every day that uh, McGregor grabs the belt, every day that he says something crazier and more derogatory about Aldo, people put more money on Conor. Yeah, I mean, I tell you what, the preview shows, I got to hand it to them. They're making this bout look like a pick em. I've seen it, you know, I've seen Aldo higher than minus 200. I've seen him at pick em. You know, McGregor's given a great, you know, representation of, you know, maybe not as as far as class wise, but he's selling his fight. And even to mention it in the same sentence now as uh, as Pacquiao and Mayweather is, I mean, that's, that's huge. I mean, I'm, I'm psyched for the fight. You know, I, I, I lean towards Aldo. You know, only because I've seen McGregor. You know, McGregor's gotten beat twice. One once by a guy that's you know the UFC signed, and that Duffy. But I tell you what, you know they're doing their job. This fight's in July, and uh, it's going to be a hell of a fight. And it's going to it's getting two way action. And I and I tell you another thing. This uh, you know, <laughs> you know Mayweather. You know, go back to Mayweather Pacquiao. The the biggest question I have, and, and this is something that I've thrown out there, nobody's nobody's answered. Freddie Roach has been criticizing Floyd, and you know I'm a big Floyd fan. He's been criticizing Floyd, saying he's getting lumped up in the gym, his sparring partners are getting the best of him, and so on. And what I don't understand is, maybe he is, but why do you want people thinking that your guy beat the other guy when he wasn't at his absolute best? It doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, and, and then also... The things about the, yeah, the leg cramps with, with Pacquiao. It's very... It, it's an odd thing to say. I want guys to think that... Floyd's looking great in the gym, and I want Floyd to go in there overconfident and run into, you know, run into a brick wall with my guy Pacquiao. You know, if I'm Freddie Roach, I don't understand the psychology behind Roach's statements. I really don't. Yeah, I don't, uh, and also we don't know. I don't know who uh, Mayweather's in there sparring with as well. I mean, you know, he could just be, he could have raised it up a notch, actually, and uh, people aren't taking it easy. Maybe this camp is just, you know, much more extreme than other camps that have been for him as well. we got to wrap it up here, Joey. Great to have you on the show. Thanks a lot for taking the time to be with us. Hey, it's always a pleasure, Gabe. Have a good one. Here's uh, Joey Odessa with us. Man, it blows my mind that it was eight years. Eight years and ten days, says uh, Joey Odessa, since Gonzaga and uh, Crow Cop. And, you know, they, they were like the, the, the stars. Crow Cop was the legend. Gonzaga was going to be the next big thing. And, you know, the thing with Gonzaga is I trusted him on a couple of occasions. And then he looks like crap. And what does he say after? I'm getting old. And he sort of jokes about it. It's hard to put your money on some dude that's joking about getting old after losing fights. Come back uh, with our videos in a week.